Today we will going to create a memory card game using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This will include using the fetch API to get the cards data, then we will use JavaScript to dynamically generate the cards. So this is the starting state of the project. As you can see I prepared two directories already. The first one is the assets, which contains all the images that we will show on the memory cards. You can see we have cherries, chili, pineapple and so on. The other folder is the data folder, where I prepared all the card data. So here I have a JSON file and each object represents one card that can be shown up in the board. Now we can start to create our HTML markup. I will start with a standard HTML5 boilerplate. After that, I'll add the link to our CSS file. Now I'll create the styles.css file that we reference from the HTML. Please be careful that you have to name the file exactly how you named it in the link tag. Now I'll add an h1 heading that will act as a title for our memory card game. And after that I will create a div with a class called greet container, which will be responsible for the layout of our cards. But now it will remain empty as we will create the cards dynamically in JavaScript. After the grid container we will create a paragraph, which will have a span inside of it, and we will use this to display the score, so the attempts that the user took to match cards. Below that we will create an actions div, which will hold of our buttons. Uh, for now we will have one button to restart the game, but feel free to extend the project with your own functionalities. Inside the action div I will create a button and call the restart function when a click event happens on the button. We will create the restart function later in JavaScript, but make sure it's wired up in HTML. Lastly, we need to include our script file, which will be index.js. It's really important to make the script tag as the last element of the body tag, because we need to have every other DOM element in place when our script runs. Also, make sure to create the index.js file in the root folder. Now let's start a live server by hitting go live. Now we can check the, our website in the browser. If you don't have go live option, make sure that you install live server from the extension store. Now it's time to add some cool styles using CSS. I start with the body tag. I set a dark background and make all text on the page white. And I also make sure to take full width and full height of the viewport. Next I'll add some styling to the heading to make it look nice. And also add some basic formatting to the score announcer paragraph. After this we will take care of the action area. We will use flexbox to center the buttons, then apply some nice styling to the button itself. We will set a green background, add some border radius and add a little bit of padding. Now it's time to add styles to our card grid. We will use a center line CSS grid with a grid gap of 16 pixels. I'll create 6 columns and 3 rows, but feel free to make it responsive with outer columns and outer rows. Also please note that I calculate the height of each row by dividing the width of the grid item by 2 and multiply it with 3. This is because we want the card aspect ratio to be 2 by 3. We'll also apply the same width and height to our cards, give it a little border radius and most importantly set the position to relative. We will use this to absolute positional our image and background image to the card. I'll also set the transform style to preserve 3D because it will give a nice 3D look to our flip effect and also set the transition to be half of a second and eased in and out, make the animation really smooth. Then I will use the front image class to set the width and height of the fruit icons, it will be 60 by 60 pixels. Then I write a CSS selector which applies when the card and the flip plus is present on the element at the same time. Please note that there is no space between the two class names. So in this case we will flip the card by rotating it by 180 degrees on the y-axis. Now we will write a selector that will be applied for any element that has the front class or the back class. Now we will use absolute positioning to make sure that the front and the back feels the card 100% both in width and height. Then the important part is to set the back face visibility to hidden. This will ensure that when we flip the card, the back side of the card should not be visible to the user. For the front of the card I will use flexbox and center the fruit icons both horizontally and vertically. We will also add the rotation of 180 degrees by default, so the front of the cards will be facing down. For the back of the card I will use a background image and position it vertically and horizontally in the center and make sure that the background size is covered so that the image covers all of our card. 
For the background image, I will use a generated SVG. Go to pattern.monster and select the pattern that you like the most. Now I will use the circle 5 pattern. Customize the colors however you want and after that, click the copy CSS button. This will generate a data URL that we can use as our background image value. And this is all the CSS that we need for our project. If we open up the browser, we can see it got nicer, but we can't see much because we have no cards yet. Now let's jump into our index.js file and get our game working. First we will save a reference to our Greek container using the query selector and the class name. After that we will initialize a few global variables that we will use. First I will create a cards array that will be empty for now. Then I create a first card and a second card that will hold the two cards that we will compare, a logboard variable that we will use when we are comparing two cards, and the score variable that will count the comparing attempts of the user. After the global variables, we will start by updating the score. To do that, we will use the query selector with the score class. And then we will make the text content equal to the score variable. Now it's time to initialize our cards. To do that, we will use the fetch API. We have to tell the fetch function where our data is located. It's an asynchronous API, so we have to use a promise chain. I won't get into the details, but basically every then function call takes the argument of the previous then function call and use it as an input. First result will be a readable stream and we have to call the JSON method on it to turn it into JavaScript object. Now we have the data format that we can work with. It's time to initialize our cards array. We will use the ES6 spread operator, copy every value into our cards array, and we will do it twice since we need two of each card. After that we will call the shuffle cards and generate card functions that we will create now. Let's start with the shuffle cards function. For shuffling we will use the Fisher Yates algorithm. First we will start by declaring our variables. We will set the current index to the card's array's length. Then we will loop through our array back to front, starting with the last element. Then in every iteration, we will pick a random index from the remaining indexes, decrease the current index by 1, and swap the two items which are placed on these indexes. We need a temporary value because when we assign the second value to the first one, we would otherwise lose the value of the first one, so we have to store it in the temporary variable. And we will continue to do this until we reach the first element in the array. Now let's write the generate cards function. We will use the for off loop to loop over the cards. For every card we will create a div element with the card class and set the date to name HTML attribute to be equal to the name value that we set in the JSON file. We will use this data attribute to compare the cards. Now we will set up the inner structure of a card. It will contain two divs, one from the front side and one for the back side. The front side will also contain an image that will use the card image value that we set the JSON file for the card. Please note that we are setting the inner HTML of the card element and we are using string template literals instead of simple strings. To use that we are not using single or double quotes but instead backticks. This enable us to use JavaScript variables inside strings. So anything that starts with a dollar sign and, are, and is between curly braces will be treated as the JavaScript variable and will be substituted to its value which in this case will be the relative image path. This is a way cleaner solution than concatenating strings and JavaScript variables. Now we just have to add the card element as a child of the grid container, so we will use the grid containers append child method. Finally, we will attach an event listener to our card element, which we are called the flip card function when the user clicks on the card. Now let's write this flip card function. First we will check whether the board is locked or not. If it's locked, then we just simply return and won't do anything. If the card is already a first card in the compersion, we won't do anything either and return. Please note that by using the this keyword we are referring to the element which we, the click handle actually runs on. If this is the first card click in a compersion, so we don't already have a first card defined, then this will be the first card and then we will return. Otherwise we know that this will be a second card of a compersion, so we will set the second card value to this card, increase the value of score by 1 because we are doing a compersion and also update it on the page. We will lock the board by setting logboard to true, so no other compersion versions can be done and we will call the check for match function that we will write just now. Check for match is a simple function. We will compare the first cards and the second cards data name attribute. We can access these values with the data set property. If the name value is equal, then we have a match. In this case we will call the disable functions, otherwise we will unflip the cards. Let's try these two functions now. First we will start with the disable cards function. 
it will be pretty simple because we've just removed the click event listeners both from the first card and the second card so when the user clicks on them nothing will happen we also call a reset board function i write it later but it will just empty the first card and the second card and unblock the board now let's write the unflip cards function in this function we will remove the flip classes from the cards to unflip them and also we will reset the board i wrap these in a set timeout function with 1000 as its second parameter which will delay this function call with one second. It will also make sure that the animation has time to complete. Lastly, we will have to create the restart function. We will call the reset board function to empty the first card and the second card and unlock the board. Then we will shuffle the cards, set the score back to default zero and update it in the page. Delete all the cards from the click container by setting its inner HTML to be an empty string. And as a final step, we will regenerate all the cards. And congratulations, now you have a working memory card game. If we open up the browser and check it, we can play a nice memory card game. If you right click and inspect in the browser, or hit Ctrl Shift I or Command Shift I on the Mac and open up the Elements tab. You can see when you click on the grid container, you can see that every card has a data name that we set in the HTML. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.